All right. Uh, first, obviously, you know, our, our, um, I know we have such a huge alumni base and family in, in the Texas area, but everybody, our prayers are obviously with everybody down in, in, in Houston and all through southeast Texas and, you know, heading all the way into Louisiana with everything that's going on there. Um, you know, when all that stuff happens, sometimes put, puts our football into reality, but our, our prayers are with all those people that are suffering through that, uh, through the storm right now. Um, for us here, we're getting ready game week. Uh, it's exciting. You know, it's a big transition for our guys. Uh, you know, I mean, we've just, you go through spring practice, you go through training camp practice, you're just constantly going against each other, and now you got to make that transition and playing against an opponent, a different team. Uh, going to be facing a different offense than we've been facing in a long time and a different defense than we faced in a long time, different kicking game, different personnel. Uh, so our guys got to do a great job transitioning uh, into that. Um, Pretty excited, though. Uh, I'm pretty excited. I thought training camp went well, as I've said. I think the, uh, you know, the the extra time that we had allotted for training camp really cut down and on uh, on injuries and and really was a big help for player safety issues uh, for us. So. Uh, tough challenge with the team we have coming in. You know, first year head coach, new new staff. So you know, there's nothing nothing to watch. Uh, you know, I you know you can watch a little bit of uh, trying to piece together what they might do. Um, you know, and especially a team as as talented as they are. You know, when you look at uh, a quarterback that's one of the top players in FCS, very very productive player with a go-to wide receiver out there on the perimeter, a veteran offensive line. Uh, they execute their offense uh, very well. Um, you know, I, I, we, you assume they're going to be running the same offense with the guy, the head coach, having been there um, for the last several years running the offense. So, um, but they are a challenge being a, a, a very option oriented offense. Uh, but they throw the ball very well uh, out of that option oriented offense. Then you go over to the other side of the ball where they have the guys, you know, a lot of people say the number one player in all of FCS. Um, you know, coming off the edge at defensive end, and they got, they got linebackers uh, that are some veteran players at linebackers, and uh, a, a very experienced group that's used to winning. You know, winning multiple uh, two straight conference titles and looking for a third in a row, uh, a playoff level team, a top 20, top 15 team actually. Uh, so, uh, a, a huge. Um, challenge for us to come out and play you know I mean with 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 some young guys gonna have their first opportunities to go play in the stadium uh, playing against a, a quality team like Charleston Southern we're gonna have our, our hands full especially with with some of the new things that we expect them to throw at us so uh, but we're ready to go kick it off uh, injury report hasn't changed from from last week um, you know, and talking to our training staff that, um, you know, it's it's still, you know, Landon Gidger, as I said, is going to be out for the year. Malik, we won't be ready for this game, but we'll know down the uh, down the road. And, and Harry Parker, hopefully, he's back out there today for us. So, uh, but not sure what his availability would be this weekend. <coughs> Excuse me. A little bit of a cold over the weekend somehow. So, Questions? You mentioned last week, Coach, that uh, there's still some decisions to be made with red shirt and things. Is there anybody that you feel comfortable saying would, would play on Saturday, any of the true freshmen? Uh, yeah, I mean, I want to see how they handle this week of practice. Uh, you know, um, I know Willie Gay's in the rotation for us. Uh, Tucker Day's competing to go play. So there, there's a couple guys who are going to have that opportunity to go play right away. But, uh, again, this is, a, this is a first time for them, so i got to see how they respond right now to kind of picking up a game plan and are they ready to get on the field on game day? Hey, Dan, I'm just curious how much you bring up the South Alabama game from last year when you know, trying to <coughs> sort of, uh, I guess, implement some lessons from that game in regards to the opener this year. Or is that something that doesn't necessarily have to be brought up? No, I don't think so. You know, I mean, it, 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 different team, different everything. They, they were they were a good football team. Um, you know, I don't know that we played exceptionally well last week, but that that's on last year. I'm sorry that that's on that's on the coaches. You know, of us making sure that we transition and put everybody in the right position to make plays. And um, you know, uh, so I, I really thought much even discussing that. You mentioned the coach is pretty similar to what they've done in the past given he's a in-house hire but there's going to be some change with with a new head coach what's your process for preparing for a guy who's in their first game head coaching well it's hard because you know it is it's you know in in-house on offense but the, the rest everybody else on the staff's new at it very very few people were retained on the staff nobody on the defensive side of the ball um, I, 
think only one or two offensive coaches. So majority, it's a whole new coaching staff. So um, that's what always makes it a challenge uh, when you you know you, you're you're trying to see what they're going to do and and how they're going to adjust to their personnel. Uh, you know, when new guys coming in, new coaches, they're going to want to add their philosophy, and then they're also going to adjust it to the personnel they have. So uh, we're going to have to do a good job making in-game adjustments. Over the past week or so, you mentioned Keith, the possibility of Keaton redshirting, perhaps. Yeah. Something that you still have to think about. Um, is he going to is he going to play on Saturday? Is it a case where like you put him in, see what he has, and and sort of use that as um, a basis for whether or not he plays or, or not? Down the no, because you can't do that. Obviously, you know, I mean, he'd have to it'd be an injury. So if you play, you know, I mean, the redshirt rule is you have you have if if you play in one of the games, you have to have a, a season-ending injury to be able to redshirt once you've played. Uh, it's not just a, a freelance games. Oh, like at practice? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's going to get a lot of reps at practice. Would that be what you would try to do to put him in the game? I guess what I'm trying to ask is what are you balancing, I guess? Well, it's, it's just it's finding whether or not we want to play him. You know, I mean, a lot of the situation comes out. Matt, right now, he's our second-string quarterback. Now, whether or not he plays is a different question. So, you know, that would mean he'd play – if something happened to our starter, he would probably get – if, if our starting quarterback got injured, he'd play a bunch. Um, if our starting quarterback didn't get injured, then that would be where the decision comes of whether or not he gets steps on the field for a game. <laughs> uh, they have a unique take on on the option and what they do, particularly mm -hmm. the, the wide splits with the offensive line and, and taking advantage of that inside. How does that – how is that a difficult task for a defensive line, specifically the interior, that has to deal with that? Well, I, I think one of the things, you know, they are an option-based offense. And, uh, you know, and you got to be very, very gap sound uh, against the option and defend every phase of it, you know, the dive quarterback and the pitch. Uh, but to me, you know, what makes them a little different is they, they throw the ball, you know. I mean, they're not your prototypical wishbone team. So uh, it is – you're not just committing everybody – to stop the run and then try to defend the one or two play actions game. They're, they're, they can throw the ball pretty efficiently, so you got to be well balanced in what you do. Coach, how is uh, Nick Fitzgerald different this year compared to last year this time? Uh, you know, one, I mean, he, he's expecting going in. I think he knows what to expect, how to prepare for game week. Um, and, you know, just uh, what it's going to entail, you know, coming in, getting ready for the game, a routine, a preparation for the game, all of those different things. I think that's a big advantage he'd have over last year, kind of, you know, being a first-time guy getting ready to go, um, of adjusting to what game plan is, what game planning's like, how to really study and prepare for the game and get yourself out there on the field ready to go play at a high level. Coach, you mentioned Tucker Day. Is that saying that he is right now the place kicker going into the game? Uh, no, I haven't decided any of that yet. That's, that'll be decided at the end of the week. Um, like I said, it might not be decided this Saturday uh, at warm-ups. So uh, I want to see how everything goes this week with those guys and, and see how they handle the adjustment. You know, I mean, there are a bunch of place kickers. None of them have played in a game uh, in, at our level. So you got – bunch of different guys competing and I want to see how they transition it's, it's a different week now now we're getting it's getting serious and then it gets really serious on Saturday and so see how they all handle it coach obviously the first game for for Todd Grantham here uh, changed coordinators and Grantham came in for Peter Sermon what changes have you seen in the defense and, and what has kind of pushed you on that side of the ball going into the season over? Uh, you know, one of the things I, I think the, uh, the the level of, of how hard our guys play that that's which is one of the most important things to me the effort and the strain in which they give, um, you know, and then also just you know how we the, this how we're fitting everything you know the guys the the overall understanding of everybody within the scheme and what they're doing and what the expectations of them are, um, you know, I've been really pleased with that. Nick's helmet popped off quite a bit last year. We what would be your plan if that happens on Saturday? Ah, uh, tighten it up. Hopefully, that's one of the things you talk about, the important things that he learns, how to do that. You know what I mean? That, you know, you know, that can't happen. You're a second-year player. So that, that can't happen to you. You know, that, that don't happen to, to the big-time guys. But if it does, what, what would be the plan? I don't know. I'll Can figure it out. Do you something in place this week? Yeah, we'll figure it out. I'll call timeout. And a similar question Steve asked about 
Nick, what about Donald Gray? How has he changed in a well, year he, going in this camp? I think he's really changed, you know, his attitude. Stepped up as a leader. You know, I think he um, – you see a guy that um, – has always had a good work ethic and, and um, since he's been here. But really that, you know, coming into his final season, the desperateness that he shows, you know what I mean? How hard he works, the detail he puts in every single day uh, to doing things the right way and really trying to set the standard high for the receivers. I think he's done a great job of that. Any news on Rivers and uh, eligibility? Uh, you know, right now, the uh, I think that we, there's a um, – uh, we're, we're appealing a waiver with the NCAA to wait and hear, so hopefully we should know something this week whether or not that appeal goes through uh, for him to be able to play.